Hello and welcome back to my channel, Africa Psych. My name is Funi and I'm continuing from my cheating videos that I've been posting. Um, please do forgive my background today. I'm not um, doing the video where I usually do it. Um, we went away to celebrate our 90th anniversary. Um, so we are at uh, another location. So please do bear with me if I look a bit tired or if my voice is a bit coarse, please do forgive me for that. Um, firstly, I'd like to say that all the opinions that I'm going to be putting up here are my opinions and no one else's opinion. So today we'll be talking about the effects of cheating on both partners. Um, one study that looked at gender differences in response to infidelity found that women tend to be more distressed by emotional affairs and men tend to become more distressed over physical affairs. My take on this is that men do also tend to be more stressed over emotional affairs. They just have a different way of showing it. The reason why we believe that men become more distressed over physical affairs is because they tend to express themselves in a more physical way than women. A man would rather act out physically than talk about what is bothering them, but that does not necessarily mean that they are not being bothered. All they do is bottle things in or up and once they cannot keep all things in anymore, they physically react. Hence, we believe that they react more physically than emotionally. We need to remember that for a person to finally get to that point where they physically react, they must be dealing with an emotional issue that actually led them to react in the way that they did. Going back to the way we were raised, it was frowned upon for a man to show his emotions. Men were applauded for being physically strong and being able to defend themselves physically. The only problem is that men do not use that physical power to defend themselves against danger or to protect their loved ones. They use it to try and destroy that which um, they fear and also to use that physical strength as an intimidation towards everyone and the vulnerable are also included. Lately on social media, a few men tried to come out and express their emotions and by doing so they were trying to change the narrative and the way things used to be by being open and honest about how they feel. They were trying to prove that they are also vulnerable and are negatively impacted by emotional issues or affairs. Social media then in turn, instead of helping them navigate their issues, they laughed at them and scolded them. Let's get one thing straight though. Every one of you who saw them as a joke and scolded these men you are hiding behind that mask to try and stroke your own ego. You are going through more or less the same issues as them, but you are trying to seek validity from everyone's comment as to whether they agree with your scolding or not. If they agreed, it simply tells you that you are right by not talking about your emotional issues and by believing that they are weak, you are continuing the wrong teachings we all grew up learning from. You are probably now so confident in yourself for not uh, being a weak person, so you will continue bottling things up until one day you commit a crime of passion. You are going to continue with the status quo, repeating the wrong things taught by the previous generations. I mean, times have changed and so should we. Men get hurt emotionally like women. They just seem to have a high degree of tolerance and this is due to the way they were brought up. A man never shows his emotions. To be regarded as a man enough, you should fight. That's how they were taught. I need you to think back to the time um, you experienced a man who just decided to throw in the towel and express his emotions in front of you or everyone. Do you think that that day was the first time they were actually being affected by whatever that they, were, they might be crying over? I mean, absolutely not, right? It affected him since the first day that he encountered it. He just did not express it in public. One has to be very worried what his next action will be after seeing him breaking down in front of everyone or just in front of you. And that specific action will be determined by how society continues to treat him in times of need. Our parents believed in something that their parents taught them and their parents taught them, so and so on, until it gets back to the Stone Ages, I guess. Instead of questioning what we were taught or told, we carried on with that information and this goes back to what I said previously in my social generational gaps video that we are afraid to question things or do different things from our elders due to fear of being labeled disrespectful. So remember, every generation has something new they brought to their times, meaning that they, there shouldn't be anything wrong with changing the status quo. The effects of infidelity may vary from person to person. 
Also, some cultures might find it very difficult to admit their affair, which makes it more difficult to effectively deal with the effects of that um, affair. The efficient way of dealing with the effects of infidelity is for both parties to be involved from the time the affair is discovered. So, I'm going to discuss the effects of infidelity. Remember, infidelity has serious negative consequences for couples and their loved ones. Mental well-being being the biggest impacted. Children are mostly affected by the issues caused by a cheating parent. Once a couple starts having relationship problems, it is not easy for the children not to pick it up on the situation. Children can see everything that is happening. It's just that they don't talk about it. By not talking about it, they will act out. And we will say the child is seeking attention. Yes, the child is seeking attention because they can see that there's trouble at home. And they're trying to divert that problem from whatever or whoever is fighting and to themselves because they end up blaming themselves for the situations that are happening at home. So you're not just affecting your partner, you're affecting the children as well if you do have children. So the first point is infidelity has been associated with different kinds of emotional responses and behaviors such as increased anxiety and depression suicidal thoughts physical aggression and threats of divorces amongst married couples trust gets broken and we all know that there is no successful relationship without trust it takes time to develop trust for an individual but it takes one little mistake to break it all off Imagine if it took me 10 years to trust you and then you break it. It will take longer than 10 years for me to regain at least 80%. And this is dependent on how the breaker of the trust behaves themselves in an attempt to win the trust back. Let's get one thing straight. You cannot win trust back because you never won it in the first place. You end it by not giving your partner a reason to doubt you. Now that you have given them that reason, it will be very difficult for you to earn it all back within a short space of time. Your partner will start questioning you your every move, like be it verbally or silently. Once you are caught cheating, you start having paranoid thoughts that your partner might seek revenge by either also cheating or leaving the relationship. So now we have two people who are paranoid due to your lack of self-control. There are some in infidelities that can be avoided and some not. Please watch my previous videos on cheating. There are times when we label affairs as infidelity, but in all honesty, we cannot label someone a cheater if they are seeking solace from a third party due to no love or intimacy in the relationship. They are staying because of children type of relationships. Do not stay for the sake of children or anyone because you were just wasting your time and the other person's time. I believe that when there is no more love or the need to be intimate with no medical issues involved, then it is time to walk away. The cheated partner starts questioning their own worth, how they look and their confidence also drops drastically. You start asking yourself questions that you might never get answers for. You question your ability to be a good partner. As much as they are hurt, they start putting the blame on oneself. That they are the reason the partner cheated. They start creating different scenarios of how they led their partner to cheat. That self-doubt then leads to severe anxiety. So imagine if your partner is already suffering from anxiety. What will the cheating do to them? Hence, suicidal ideation. Once you start thinking you are the problem, then one starts thinking of solutions which might involve suicide or even murder. One cannot brush off the feelings that come crashing down on them um, due to the infidelity. You, no matter how strong you are, you will start having mental images of your partner with the other person and that hurts the most because automatically you imagine him or her doing better things to your partner than you could. You start assuming how good your partner enjoys the other person's presence more than yours. Being cheated on unleashes a part of you that you probably didn't know existed. The person cheated on will never be the same again. You might even develop a new character that is always on a defense gear. One does not want to let their guard down once again. You feel like, fool me once, you know. So by overreacting <coughs> or overprotecting yourself, it might make it difficult for the issues within the relationship to be resolved. 
the one who cheated might start complaining that the other partner is now very rude, defensive, always angry or fighting, but you are forgetting that you made or unleashed the beast or dragon that is always spitting fire. If you did not cheat, this person wouldn't need a reason to play, to play the defense position or the town. The cheated will start monitoring your phone, your calls, your whereabouts, and even how you look when going out alone without them versus when you are with them. Even if there is no difference, they will always see you putting more effort on your appearance when you go out without them, meaning that you're going to see the other person. All this might sound stupid, but believe you me, that it doesn't matter who you are, but being cheated on by a loved one, someone you love dearly, can and will bring out the worst even in the most calm, respected person. Your degrees, your career, your wealth, and everything that makes you who you are does not matter anymore. You are vulnerable and the biggest thing you have to do in your lifetime is to bring yourself out of that dark place your cheating partner put you through. So it becomes very difficult to get out of that dark place if the cheating partner is not supportive. You have to drag yourself out of there with no rope to help you up. When your cheater partner is on their phone, innocently, you will always wonder if they are busy with the other person. You start paying attention to things you never did before, the infidelity, small things such as him or her looking on the side mirror or the review mirror while driving. And unfortunately, there seems to be a potential affair partner where they are looking. So now they cannot even drive safe with the fear of you assuming that they are ogling the other person. So now your cheating has brought in an imaginary third party. And then it turns out like your partner is crazy because they're seeing or hearing things that you can't or anyone else can. The cheated partner will also start having episodes that you deem psychotic, such as screaming or crying for no reason. You label them psychotic, but forgetting that you unleashed that same behavior that was either buried far away or never actually existed. You created the psycho that you keep on actually pointing fingers at. Being cheated on by a loved one hurts so much that no words can really explain the feelings nor even try to understand why you feel that way. You feel more betrayed because the person who is supposed to take a bullet for you is the one pulling the trigger, metaphorically, and not to their heart, but yours. How then can you trust this person with your well-being again if they are the ones plotting your demise? Sad, hey? Being cheated on feels like one has been run over by a thousand bulldozers and every time you try to die, they resuscitate you and you go through that pain a thousand times more, over and over again. It feels like they literally pulled your heart out, put it on a burning coal whilst they're being added over and over again. It even becomes painful to breathe. That's why you always have to remember to breathe. Depending on an individual, one starts thinking they are now worthless. They see no worth in existing and feel that the only way out is out, killing themselves. Some people who commit suicide after being cheated on might actually be doing that to express how they feel due to the betrayal or simply want to punish the partner. Unfortunately, you will not be there to experience the hurt, and in some cases, they might not even be affected in a way you thought they might be. So now you've left this world and other people who care and love you because of this one specific person who was selfish enough to hurt you. Please think before you commit suicide. Talk to someone. There's always someone out there willing to listen. And even if they're just listening to go and gossip about you, it will help you because you actually coughed it out of your chest. The cheater, those who are not pathological cheaters, they are People who are just cheaters. And there's nothing you can do to change that. So for those who are not pathological cheaters, they might be regretting that one moment of weakness that they now start trying everything in their power to prove their loyalty and regret to their partners. This, however, might actually lead to the partner feeling too overwhelmed by their actions and think that they are doing that because they want to blindside them and continue with their love affairs. In this instance, then the cheater starts feeling under pressure to perform, unappreciated for their efforts, and start having those paranoid thoughts of being cheated on as well. The cheated 
might decide to revenge themselves by also cheating some making sure that the partner finds out in order for them to hurt in the same manner that they did revenge cheating only worsens the situation and even the slightest chance of rebuilding might be lost in that instance remember we forgive differently so if you decide that you're going to do revenge cheating it might be difficult for you to rebuild because maybe your partner is not as forgiving as you are so this might break it off two wrongs don't make it right so <clears throat> the cheated might continue to have outbursts about their affair which the cheater might see as being unfair and this is because when you cheat and get caught you expect the situation to be dealt with quickly and easily and that's being selfish it doesn't work like that for the cheated gasetswana we say mudiri wa lebala mudirwa ga lebala which simply translates to the person who is in the wrong easily forgets what they did but the person who was wronged never forgets Hence the wrongdoer will always feel like their partner is overreacting. If you mention the the affair maybe let's say after 6 months or 1 year they might come back and say to you but this happened a long time ago. It might have happened a long time ago when we're looking at the time but when it comes to the emotions of the ones who've been cheated on it will always come back even 20 years down the line. You have to remember that being cheated on can be so traumatic to some that they develop post traumatic stress disorder PTSD and anything can trigger the trauma it can be something as little um as hearing the name of the other person or just one that sounds like a little bit like theirs or something that you say as the cheater while having a simple conversation with your partner once that trigger tr- triggers the tr- the trauma then the partner goes back to the first day they found out for them it's a repetition of everything the only difference is that now they are able to deal with it differently than the first time they actually found out cheating creates massive doubt on the cheater as well because they start doubting their partner's loyalty due to what they did or their own ability to make their partner happy again cheating creates anxiety and stress on both parties and on the cheater it only creates that for the cheater who really um regrets what they did who really sees the mistake in what they did and vows to themselves and their partner that they will not repeat the same mistake again it does not create anxiety on people who are just out there just to cheat and they don't care about other people's emotions or feelings you have to remember one thing when you cheat on someone you reduce the love and respect they have for you and the relationship every time you get caught it goes down the love goes down so your partner is slowly falling out of love with you and you don't even realize it the unfortunate part of this is that every time you cheat and get caught you the cheater falls deeper in love with your partner while trying to convince them to stay so by the time your partner falls out of love with you you are head over heels in love with them Hence in most cases the cheater now starts being so jealous that they start thinking that they are being cheated on. The hunter becomes the hunted. The teacher becomes the student. Kind of vibes. You end up now physically expressing yourself due to the fear of losing them. One of the leading um um causes of gender-based violence GBV. For example, a man who has been cheated on might act in ways such as going to fetch his partner at for example an event or social gathering aggressively because they still have the fear of being cheated on and humiliated. I'm not condoning GBV, don't get me wrong, but most of it can be avoided by just being faithful. When such incidences happen, we as society are very quick to judge the partner who is acting up without really understanding the root cause. We will talk about GBV one day. And by doing so, we support the cheater as the victim in this current situation and in turn putting pressure on a partner who already has for example anxiety caused by your victim to get more anxious. When the cheated now starts realizing that they might be alone and no one to understand them, then follows the suicidal ideation or murderous thoughts. In order for us 
a society to help build a better society for a lack of a better word we need to start questioning the root cause of all actions before we start taking sides so i'm going to end this video here and obviously i like i said in my previous video i'm going to break it down piece by piece because if we discuss everything related to cheating in one video it will be a very long video be sure to watch my next video where i will be discussing how partners should deal with finding out that your partner is cheating what and how the cheater should react and respond and how the partner should react and respond in order to save the relationship and at least try to regain the trust whatever little trust there still is before you think you are cool enough or clever enough to cheat please remember that trust that is lost is like a broken glass and it can never be reassembled to create a similar thing ever again it will always have cracks and those cracks are parts of your partner's heart where they have doubts about your 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 everything about you actually your little moment of joy of the stolen juice might create a lifetime of bitterness or sour juice for someone else or yourself thank you once again for watching till the end please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't hit the like button turn on your notifications and share. Thank you.